The Twins win a game they probably should have lost at home, walking off the Tigers 25 and 15 on the season. Man, a lot to talk about. Today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Monday, May 23rd, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Twins walk off the Tigers tonight to improve to 25 and 15. They are 4 0 against the Tigers. They've walked them off twice at Target Field, and they did not deserve to win this game. I mean, overall, this was not a good game for the Twins. I'll call it like it is. I always try to call it like it is. They did not they did not play well tonight for, you know, 8 innings of this game. And I'm thinking more offensively Chris Archer was very good. Griffin Jacks was not tonight. Emilio Pagan was very good. You had a couple guys stepping up tonight to provide this win, but a majority of the team was bad to awful tonight. You look at the plate appearances, you look at just the production, you look at Maybe even the body language tonight after Max Kepler's grand slam, the Twins offense just shut down. They took an early 4 0 lead and shut down is the right way to put it. They did nothing from that point forward offensively until the ninth when they walked this game off. And they're very lucky that they were able to get to the ninth inning in a tie game. Emilio Pagan was awesome. I mean, Max Kepler is the MVP of this game. He's he's the player of the game because he hit the grand slam and he drew the walk that eventually scored in the ninth inning to win this game. He scored the game-winning game run. He gave the Twins a 4-0 lead with the Grand Slam. But Emilio Pagano would be a close second to me because you look at where this game was at. 4-4. The Detroit Tigers have not been good this year. They are not good. Their offense is, is not good. They're pesty, though. They, they're pests. They they get to the plate, and they battle. That's what they've done, and they continue to do that. They did it under Garden Hire. They do it with A.J. Hinch. They battle, and Miguel Cabrera is still going to beat you with opposite field run scoring hits, and he did that tonight. The one clear strength they have right now, their rotation is decimated. Casey Mize is on the injured list. Tarek Skubal not going to pitch in this series. Matt Manning on the injured list. They're, Eduardo Rodriguez on the injured list. Their, their pitching is decimated in the rotation. They don't have good starting pitching right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't have a good lineup, top to bottom. Their one clear strength is the bullpen. They have some dudes back, back there. And you saw Alex Lang. You see Gregory Soto back there. Andrew Andrew Chafin's good too. And, you know, he blew the game there, blew, this, blew the top off in the ninth. But they have a very good bullpen. Willie Peralta's been very good. Michael Fulmer's been very good for them. Even Joe Jimenez, who the Twins have crushed in recent seasons. The last place you want to be, because I would say the Twins' biggest weakness is probably the back end of their rotation. And if you were to compare all of their team factors to other teams, they would pale to a lot of other teams back of the bullpens, especially competitive teams like the Yankees and the Astros and even the White Sox. They don't have the same firepower. They have Yohan Duran and, and they have Emilio Pagan, but that's not really going to match up against you know Liam Hendricks and, or all this Chapman. And the, like They just don't have it. And they don't have it compared to the Tigers either. I would take the Tigers bullpen 10 times out of 10 against the Twins bullpen. So you're in a 4-4 game late. That's the last place you want to be, especially because Yuan Drown was down. He wasn't available in this game, clearly wasn't available. Pagan went to, you know, Drown pitch yesterday. That would have been, I think, three and five days for Duran. So we knew he wasn't going to pitch tonight. I at least knew he wasn't going to pitch tonight. And Pagan gave them two great innings. But they were not in a good spot in this game. It was like they were trying to hand this thing away. It was slowly whittling down. All of a sudden, it's 4-4. Tigers had opportunities to score. And credit to Caleb Dubar as well for getting out of a first and second one-out jam that would have busted this game open before the Twins had a chance to win it in the ninth. This game would have been over, you know, innings before that in the seventh if Caleb Dubar had given up those runs. When he came in, he didn't. He did a good job. He got the outs, and the Twins have done such a good job this year overall of limiting damage. They limit damage, and I know Bramer was talking about it tonight. It's so true. 
They haven't had outings really where guys get blown up. And when they do, like Yenier Cano did yesterday, they still won the game. And even though they didn't deserve to win tonight, they didn't play a complete, it wasn't a complete team effort like we've seen from them, you know, this year. Now they're 25 and 15 for a lot of those, you know, 25 wins. It was a team effort. But, you know, a handful of them too. It's one or two guys. Joe Ryan in Kansas City, I think of in a one nothing win, just carried that. Carried that win for the Twins. I think they scored their one run on a sacrifice fly. So carrying the day. Today it was a couple guys. It was Max Kepler, Pagan, Theobar, you know, a group of guys carrying the day. Gio Urshela hit that. I mean, it should have been a game-ending double play at the end, but it wasn't. They still found a way to win. And that's just been the theme so far. As I said last night, I think it rings true every single day with this club until further notice is every day, especially in this part of their schedule, when they're playing the Tigers and Rose, because the Tigers and Rose are going to give you a chance to win. They're going to give you a better chance to win. They're going to hand you a better chance to win than good teams. That's the difference. Like the Royals and Tigers are going to beat themselves a lot of the time. The Twins didn't really beat the Tigers tonight. I wouldn't say the Tigers beat themselves. They just kind of, you know, when they needed a big pitch, when they needed a big run, they did it and the Tigers didn't do it. That was the difference tonight. It's a good win. I mean, it counts as a win. You're not going to look back at this and think, you know, the Twins didn't play well. Every day is different with this team. And Byron Buxton looks lost at the plate, drops a ball in center field that he catches 10 times out of 10 normally, doesn't look right. Their best player is not contributing right now to the team, and they're still winning. They're on a five-game winning streak. Buxton hitless in this streak. It's incredible what they've been able to do. After this word from Bet Online, let's talk more about Kepler, his season so far, and then the quick hook for Chris Archer. I thought there were some mistakes made in this game. First, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find out all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, the Twins, fights, and even next season's. NFL futures. Bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Twins your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Again, go over to betonline.net. They are outstanding. They've been supporting us for so long. They're your continued source for all your sporting wagering information. Max Kepler is now hitting 262 on the season with a 368 on base percentage. He's slugging 446 for a 143 weighted runs created plus. That places him 43% above league average, park league adjusted at creating runs this year. Where would they be without Max Kepler? I mean, you could say it about a few guys. I said it about Yohan Duran last night in the bullpen. Where would they be without Yohan Duran in the back of their bullpen? I think they would have blown a few more games. They'd be stretched more in the back. Without Max Kepler, they, I think this offense would, would look a lot different this year. It's not just his ability at any time to hit a home run over the limestone in right field, the thousandth home run at target field tonight. It's not his defense in right field, not just his defense in right field, I should say. It's the quality of that bat. And this year for the Twins, it's going to be a storyline. Like, you look at every team every year and say, what defined that team? The 2021 Twins last year, terrible pitching defined that team. Terrible starting pitching, awful back end of the bullpen, blowing games, disconnected. That's 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 the identity of the 2021 Twins. So far for these Twins, it's a good staff that, gets outs when they need to a majority of the time and an offense, a lineup that grinds and takes really tough at bats. That's, that's been the theme for me, a lineup that when they're clicking like they are right now, and they weren't really clicking for seven innings tonight, taking good at bats. Max Kepler feels like he's giving you a good plate appearance every time he's up there and he does it in the big spots and Jorge Polanco didn't do it tonight. And <laughs> I was proclaiming yesterday. I know Jorge Polanco is going to give me a good plate appearance. He did not tonight in a big spot with Luis Rise on third and two outs in the eighth. Kepler, you get to the ninth. What does Kepler do? He says, I'm going to have a great plate appearance. He does it, and he gets on first base, ends up scoring the game-winning run. Kyle Garlic pinch hits, gets a base hit to right off a lefty. 
everybody's doing their jobs as well. You know, Joe Smith comes in, he struggles. Dealbar picks him up. Emilio Pagan comes in, gets big outs for two innings, does his job. Max Kepler gets on base, does his job, drives in, runs in the first, does his job. Guys are doing their jobs, and it's not everybody at the same time. It's impossible to do that, but it's enough. It's enough right now to win a lot of ball games. And the Twins at 25 and 15, 25 and 15, they're 10 games above 500. And in this 15 game stretch, we talk about constantly with the Royals and Tigers alternating. They're 4 and 0 to start. You couldn't have a better start than 4 and 0. And the goal was 10 and 5. So 6 and 5 to finish, 10 and 5. That seems like the pessimistic view of what this stretch could, could entail for the Twins. I think they're in a good spot to sweep the Tigers with Sonny Gray tomorrow. Tigers, as I said, rotation is decimated. I think the Twins are in a good spot to win this series tomorrow. And then Dylan Bundy Wednesday, you know, is more of a toss up, but I think they're in a, in a, a good spot to sweep this thing. Archer goes four tonight. And I thought it was, you could argue that it was aggressive or conservative for Rocco Baldelli to pull Chris Archer before going through a lineup a third time. I would have left Archer in for the fifth inning tonight. I think he was at 68, 70 pitches. I would have left him in because for a majority of the night, he had his slider command. And I know he struggled in the fourth, but he had his slider command. You have two righties coming up the next inning and Scope and Cabrera. And I know Miggy's tough, but Miggy's not going to beat you, you know, with a home run anymore. He might, he might get into one. You know, he's going to hit 10 home runs probably this year, 10 or 15 home runs. But he's not Miguel Cabrera from 10 years ago. And I feel okay with Chris Archer facing Miguel Cabrera there. I know Jonathan Scope has owned Chris Archer in the past and almost hit another homer off him. So that was definitely a consideration. But the Twins had a two-run lead. And, you know, that at a certain point, this will catch up to a team. And you saw it happen to the White Sox when so many short starts where they have to go to their bullpen constantly, constantly, constantly. And it almost bit them tonight because Griffin Jacks, relievers are going to have bad nights and they're going to get beat and guys are going to hit homers off them. And Griffin Jackson just wasn't his night. Joe Smith had no allowed a run in 13 and two thirds innings. And he gets blasted around a little bit. Those nights are going to happen. And the, the way you can reduce those nights from happening is don't expose those guys as much as you do. And I think Archer could have got out there for the fifth. Did it end up mattering in the outcome of the game? No, but I think it could have. I think it could have because the Twins were so stretched late. They needed two innings from Pagan. And, you know, luckily he gave it to them and he performed at a very high level on those two innings. And it's easy to see why the Twins like Emilio Pagan. When he's right, he has three plus pitches with a fastball at 96, 97, a good slider and a splitter that is nasty when he's commanding it around the zone to lefties and righties. So it's easy to see why they like Pagan, but they were stretched in the back end of that game. They got, I don't want to say lucky, but they were fortunate to win that ball game tonight. Let's look ahead. What to expect for the rest of this series. First, this word from Bill Barr. I love brownies, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Imagine if you could lick that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in. You're in luck because Bilt Bar has a new creation, and this one is better than ever. The brownie batter puff, you heard me right. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Built.com. Have you tried the Built Puffs yet? I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Puffs are a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. That's right. Delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Built Bars are not just delicious. Built Bars are also healthy. And you can go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCKED15. That's promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at Built.com. Looking ahead for the Twins, it's Sunny Gray Tuesday, Wednesday's Dylan Bundy, and then you have a four-game home series with Kansas City. When you win these games today and Sunday, when you win games, you probably should have lost. I think they definitely should have lost Sunday. I mean, obviously, they were out 6 nothing, and they didn't. And when I say should have, sometimes that has different meanings. Like should have, they didn't play well. I mean, they didn't play well for seven innings on Sunday, and they still won. They didn't play well for seven innings today, and they still won. When you find a way to still win with two good innings in a game from your from your club, you know, from a majority of your club, you're going to win a lot of ball games because 
there are going to be days as well when everything clicks, when everybody plays well, or when a majority of the lineup is hitting, or you know, you get a great start and it sets you up to win. They're winning in all of those different ways. And you never know what's going to happen any given day. You know, the twins could go out there tomorrow and put up another goose egg. And then those things become trends. And you say, okay, the offense has been in somewhat of a rut outside of Max Kepler. But this team so far, they've shown that they bounce back, you know, offensively, the pitching staff, the bullpen. They bounce back when they know that more is expected of them. And the key in all of that is there's going to be bad games. I always say that. This is baseball, baby. There's ups and downs. There's ups and downs. We get so high. We get so low. You got to find a way to find yourself in the middle. There's going to be downs. There's going to be downs for the lineup. There's going to be downs for the staff, for every single starter. There's going to be downs. There's going to be downs for every single reliever in that bullpen. But when there are downs, the, the key in that is keeping those downs to a minimum, both in that moment, like Caleb Thielbar coming in and getting two outs tonight for Joe Smith in a big spot. And also for that week, for that month, for that period in time, you know, Joe Smith, does he come out next time? And I would bet that he's going to have a good outing next time because that's what this team has done. And Joe Smith's done it his entire career. But those are the keys. And then winning those games anyway. I mean, the first thing I tweeted after this game, the Twins didn't deserve to win tonight and they won anyway. Do you win in spite of, you know, Chris Archer only going four and Griffin Jack struggling and Joe Smith struggling and Yuandron's down and the offense doesn't score after the first inning? Do you still win? Yeah, they still won, which I think is a, a marker for this team for what we've seen so far. And I'm not surprised they won. Like, you just kind of laugh. I laugh watching it. I'm like, I don't. I don't know how they're doing it, and I, I partly know how they're doing it. They're playing bad teams. The Royals yesterday certainly helped the Twins. The Tigers today certainly helped the Twins. They're playing bad teams, but they're beating those bad teams, and that's the most important thing at the end of the day. No one cares that the Twins last year in April had like 15 close losses where they lost in the ninth inning or later. Nobody cares. Nobody cares how they lost. What they care about is they look at the standings and they look at your record and they see that you're 10 and 25 in April or early May and your season's over. Now they look at your record. They don't care that the Twins didn't play well tonight. Nobody cares that the Twins trailed for seven innings, six nothing yesterday, late. They only care that the Twins are 25 and 15, that they're 10 games above 500, that they're playing great baseball. I shouldn't say they're playing great baseball because, you know, at times they're not playing great baseball, but they're playing winning baseball when they need to play winning baseball in the spots, in these games, in their innings, in their at-bats. It's fun to watch. I want to finish Spencer Steer promoted to AAA St. Paul. Spencer is a guest of the show. We had him on, I want to say, early offseason last year. He's awesome. He is a product of, you know, the twin system taking guys who are contact oriented and instilling power. And he has big time power. He was raking at double A for Wichita. He's 25. He can play third, can play second, can play a little short in a pinch. And Spencer Steer, I think is going to be the next debut for the twins. So keep an eye on him. We'll talk about him on our next prospect Friday. Thanks so much for listening today. Thank you for making locked on twins. Your first listen every day. Now make your second listen locked on MOB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him. Sully brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back tomorrow after another, hopefully twins winner go twins.